Welcome back to episode four of How Flutter Works. In this episode, we'll explore the relationship between widgets and render objects as Flutter begins to transmute our widget tree into something that can be rendered to the screen. Recall in episode two how I mentioned the three primary categories of widget, stateless widget, stateful widget, and render object widget. We saw that stateless and stateful widgets each involve a build method, which assembles further widgets. And I briefly mentioned that render object widgets do not have a build method. That might seem counterintuitive, but the explanation lies in the fact that the job of render object widgets is not primarily to arrange more widgets, but instead to begin filling out the render tree. The key insight here is that stateless and stateful widgets are only a means to an end. And that end is render object widgets, because only render object widgets can actually lead to something appearing on the user's screen. This means a widget tree that never introduces any render object widgets will, by definition, render nothing. Also recall in episode two how we examined the relative shapes of the widget and element trees and saw that they always have a perfect one-to-one -one relationship. Consider this widget tree and its associated element tree. As expected, they have the same shape. But how will their render tree look? The answer is that it is a pruned version of the first two trees. Anywhere in the widget tree where you see a stateless or stateful widget, the render tree is empty. However, each render object widget corresponds to a render object. This is the mechanism behind the fact that a widget tree of only stateless or stateful widgets will definitionally not render anything because its render tree would be completely empty. Funny enough, this means all the stateless and stateful widgets we write are kind of like middle managers. They don't do any rendering work. They only talk about rendering work. To illustrate this, here is a list of example stateless widgets from the Flutter framework. Notice how many are high level concepts like autocomplete, drawer, list tile, and navigation bar. And here is a list of some example stateful widgets from the Flutter framework. Similarly, many are high level design system concepts like app bar, navigation rail, scaffold, and text button. Compare those lists with these example render object widgets from the Flutter framework. Notice that most are low level visual concepts around alignment, sizing, color, spacing, and text. These are concepts that you can actually use to lay out and draw UIs. And they're the building blocks all of those stateless and stateful widgets bring together to make our apps light up. So if stateless and stateful widgets build more widgets and render object widgets produce render objects, well, what does that look like? The element behind a render object widget runs this pseudocode, creating a render object and then inserting it into the render tree by saving that new object on the nearest ancestor render objects child property. And here's an example implementation of create render object. And as you can see, it, well, creates a render object. Later on, when your widget tree rebuilds and provides a new render object widget, the element between them, which is bridging the gap between the two, takes that new render object widget and calls its update render object method. And here's an example implementation of update render object from within a render object widget. You can see that the widget updates mutable fields on the render object with the latest values, readying it for the next frame. Each of those attribute assignments are actually magic setters, the inner workings of which we'll explore soon. So that's render object widgets. They're fairly simple. All they do is emit and update render objects who, it turns out, are having most of the fun. In the next episode, we'll explore the day-to-day -day life of just such a render object. See you there.